Hello hobbyists and welcome to another video by me, Ryan as always, and today we're going to cover the White Dwarf issue from October. This has just landed in my house today, which is great because it's not out until Saturday because I've got the special edition of one. And today we're going to cover the Flashpoint, a little bit about it. We're not going to cover too much because you know you can get the magazine yourself, read all about it, and then eventually when all this Covid stuff has subsided, maybe we can actually play some games. So, what is the Flashpoint system, I hear you ask? Well, the Flashpoint system is a set of rules that are going to be in the White Dwarf every month that are going to cover a campaign at some point in the galaxy in 40k. And this month is the start of the Orgrivon system, um, which is a system of worlds, six worlds to be exact, that are basically being contested, because obviously that's what 40k is. It's not Peace Hammer, it's Warhammer. And they are uh, all fighting over this mineral-rich system, and we're going to cover the worlds. So there are seven pages of lore in this issue, and the first planet is Veronica. Now, Veronica is a world that has a lot of Adeptus Mechanicus um, forges on it, as well as a lot of Necron sort of relics and just like architecture, which are being researched by the Admech, so there's a lot of conflict there. Saronic, which is the next planet, is a habitat world that has a lot of wildlife, a lot of large creatures, dangerous creatures that are hunted by the nobility of the system and used as trophies and bragging rights and all sorts of stuff like that. Ogravan is a world that has a lot of rare material. There's not actually a large abundance of it, but it's very rare, so the Admech have decided that they're going to mine the hell out of this planet. And what's happened to this planet is it's caused a lot of fault lines to appear, a lot of artificial fault lines. Uh, there's a huge de gene stealer cult presence there because of a lot of the mining and the sort of subterranean nature of it. Argolish is the Argravon system's ecclesiarchal capital, so there's a lot of land here that's dedicated to the god emperor himself. There are cathedrals, bas uh, colossal basilicas, cathedrals, chapels, cha chancels, and as well as sanctuaries dedicated to the emperor. ISO is a agri world, it's a failing agri world, it's down to 10% of what it was 40 years ago. Three separate planetary governors consecutively have been installed and then shot or executed for incompetence on this planet. So it gives you an impression of the kind of martial law that's there. There is a large contingent of battle sisters from the number of orders including the Order of the Archant Shroud, Our Martyred Lady, the Wounded Heart and the Sublime Adoration. There is also as some as Astra Militarum there as well. Ishra is the last planet in the system and it's also the furthest from the system star and because of that it is a never-ending winter landscape that is laced with jagged mountain chains, vast inhospitable tundras, dark seas and hyperactive cryovolcanoes. The residents on this planet are also nomadic and that they travel around the mega shoals over freezing oceans on large hunting vessels. Task Force 11 is the imperial force that have been sent there to take back control of the region and bring it under imperial law because of all the xenos and all the stuff that's going down in this flashpoint it tells you exactly who's there down to regiments but it doesn't tell you down to the uh, you know the single individual so it gives you a, a broad overarching look on who is actually in this campaign from a law perspective there is a section that do, does cover the Xenos that appear in this campaign. Now, mainly the Necrons are the main sort of quote bad guys of this campaign. However, there are a smattering of Eldari around as well as Gene Stealer Cult that are kind of in on the fringes. So it's to, trying to get everybody in the mix to be able to play in this campaign. And it does it to a certain degree and there's a nice balance, uh, but we'll see in a minute how it actually spans out. So the rules themselves. So what you actually need for the Agravan campaign, or any Flashpoint really, is a campaign master. So the campaign master could be anybody within your gaming group, but this individual is tasked with tracking and keeping the scores of the matches and who's in what alliance and organising games. Now, I've done this sort of thing in the past with sort of like mini tournaments and stuff between my local gaming group, which is six of us, so it wasn't that difficult. 
So, but this could be anybody, and you can change it between phases if your know, people's available and stuff like that. And it's recommended that you only swap campaign master in between phases. The flashpoint system in White Dwarf is designed to run one phase in every issue. So in this issue in October, we're going to get phase one, November phase two, and then December phase three. Once you've got a campaign master, you need to actually form alliances. There's a table that has a number of players and how many alliances that you should have, somewhere between 2 to 16 plus. So you either have 2, 3 or 4, depending on the actual size of people that you're playing with. Once the alliances have been made, then you can start playing games. It's obvious to say that one alliance should face off in another alliance. They shouldn't really be within an alliance fighting if possible if there is because you know there's not actually somebody that turns up on that day for your game you could just play a game of 40k and you know with those armies and it just as doesn't go down towards the total for that phase so what you're doing is you're earning war zone points for that phase now once the phase is over the war zone points are erased so you're back down to zero so there's not this snowball effect from phase to phase so each phase is up for grabs now if you win phases phase one and two are worth one strategic point and phase three is worth three strategic points so depending on how it pans out you could have an overall winner a draw or a loser however in this uh, issue it doesn't actually say what happens in a draw so i guess that there's just a stalemate amongst the planets so there are rules to play on three of the planets of the six that are vastly different to each other Depending on which one that you play on, you you have either negative modifiers, there's a chart to do with like objectives and stuff, and they're quite thematic, um, and I think that you'll probably enjoy them if you like this sort of gameplay. There are unique agendas in this issue. Some of the agendas are generic, others are linked to a certain army, like the Imperial Guard, the Sisters of Battle, Imperial Knights, Admech, Gene Steeler Cult, Necrons, or specifically the Death Watch, which is quite interesting. Not only does it play into the Crusade type by giving you experience points, but it also plays into the phase because all of them give you additional war zone points depending if you meet the criteria of that specific agenda. And last but not least, there is a short story by Callum Davis, which is between the Adeptus Scions and Necrons, which I have left yet to read, so I'm not going to cover. So what do I think about flashpoints? I think they're great, really. Personally, I'm looking to play Crusade a lot more than maybe match play because I want my army to actually mean something and between game to game, I want some sort of evolution of my army as we go along. I think this fills a void in the Crusade game system because in the big rulebook, it doesn't give you the overall arching narrative or anything like that. So it leaves you up to interpretation and what you provide between the two people that are playing the game or in this case, a Game Master. Now I know Games Workshop just released the Pariah Nexus Crusade booklet thingamabob that I can't remember the actual title of at the time of recording and that does fill the same role as what the, this Flashpoint thing in the White Dwarf does. Expanding on Crusade and giving you the tools to create stories between friends and making sure that game from one to the next means something and just isn't a flash in the pan battle between two armies. I mean, I'm super pumped for Flashpoint. I'm also good to the fact that I'm just getting more and more lore to do with 9th edition because there's not a lot of books that are out at the moment within this edition like there was within 8th. But that's just the time. We're only a few months into 9th at the moment. The issue is out on Saturday, so you can go and pick it up and then read all about it in there. And it's something that's great to have. There's a lot of other stuff that's in the magazine that is great. You know, the usual painting tutorials and other sort of games that Games Workshop do. So go and pick it up when it comes out. Well, thank you for joining me. That's it for this episode. So hit that subscribe button, smash that like, leave me a comment if you want. I always love hearing from people. And I'll see you in the next video. Play more games, take care of yourself. Bye-bye.